Hi everyone, so I'm back with a new video and in this video I'm going to show you how I made the sleeve for my ThinkPads X1 Carbon. So I got in touch with the guys from Lenovo to make like a little collab making a carbon fiber sleeve. So it all starts with uh, checking the uh, dimensions on the website of the laptop itself. So if you're interested you can find a link down below to check more specs out for the laptop. So when once I knew the specs and the dimensions it's time to do the, the computer work. So I'm using um, easel here to carve out uh, the shape for the pre-mold on the X-Carve. So the first thing I've shown on the computer is just shut down um, sleeping mode and so on on your laptop because you want to avoid your uh, computer falling down during the carving. So here's the carving going on. So I'm using MDF. So it's a soft wood because I didn't have anything else in the workshop. So I'm pushing the machine to the limits. I'm going really down with the spindle and then I'm removing the parts. But the thing I wanted to have is just to keep all the two halves um, tightly against each other all the time um, before uh, cutting out everything, just to make sure that the shape is exactly how it is. Because the dimensions were very specified on, um, on the laptop sleeve with all the uh, internal carbon fiber. So there's a, a limit margin of error here. So I'm using a ruler bit here um, just to round off the edges, uh, just to have like a nice sleeve to put the laptop in. So here I'm just rooting around the MDF board, so this went very well. Um, the only thing that MDF you will see later on in the video is it is sucking a lot of uh, resin in. but. I'll explain that a bit later. So I'm using an aluminium plate to separate both halves. So uh, for me the most important thing is just to have both halves um, like measured uh, very tightly one to each other. So I mean bottom and top parts should be exactly how it is um, for the mold because this will be a two part mold with the two halves on each side. So I'm drilling out the holes, did some measurements and the part was still together how it was uh, planned before. I'm just using some um, bondo here to fill up the holes and the screw holes. So here is the epoxy. I'm using laminating epoxy from Easy Composites uh, because it has a fast cure and it's a bit thicker than the infusion resin that I'll be using later on. So I'm just brushing it on just to create a seal uh, of the MDF just to prevent the gel coat and so on from the tooling resin. Uh, being absorbed into the parts. So here is the sand. It's, you can still see some uh, down spots, so uh, the little holes. But I didn't put too much care. I could have put a second coat, but for me I was just thinking these will be like little tops in the mold that I can just sand off. So here I'm using the first layer of the tooling uh, resin. So it's made to make molds. It's very stable. And this is the gel coat. So this is the first layer that will be visible on the mold side. So I'm using, I think it's 2% hardener, it's getting quite cold in Belgium, I think it's around 15 degree, 15 degree Celsius. Um, so I've used 2% and let it cure for around 2 or 3 hours till it gets tacky. Then it's time to use the coupling coat and the coupling coat will make a good bond in between the gel coat and the tooling resin coming on top. So I think it was around 150 grams I've used here. And then there's a hundred grams uh, chopped strands, fiberglass on top um, to create that bond. So I let it go to a tacky state and then do the tooling resin. So I'm using four, co four coats of a 400 gram square meter uh, chopped strands fiberglass. And I think it was around 1.8 kilograms of tooling resin going into one half of the mold. So uh, don't miscalculate. Um, it can use quite a lot of resin, but it's very important to have stable molds without deforming and so on. So I did this two times, so there's a bottom and a, um, and a top part. I'm just drilling through the molds and just bond them together. So at this stage, nothing was demolded yet, just to be sure that everything is stable and stays in the right shape uh, till now. So now I'm demolding. Here is um, 
little problem I didn't expect is that the screws came loose from the MDF so if you're using a harder wood it should stick uh, but I was able to remove the parts and just do the first test fit because this is the first time I knew if the laptop would be fitting into the case or not so I'm just polishing sanding everything just to have a nice high gloss like in the level that I want it to be it's not super high gloss but it's good enough for one cover at this moment so I'm just shaping it a bit better removing all the fiberglass that was left at the sides and now I'm cutting a 650 grams carbon fiber uh, 12 weave so um, I'm using three layers so this is a 200 then there's a 650 grams coming on top and then there's a 200 grams again so you can find everything on the easy composites web shop uh, there will be a link down below with all the materials used in this tutorial. So this is a peel ply and this will enable you to remove all the supply coming on top of the fiberglass at the end. So then there's the infusion mesh, there's a tacky tape all around the mold flange. And then everything is backed just to have a good vacuum and have a tight pressure against all the corners and so on. So I'm just checking if everything is tightly against the mold without bridging. So here is another resin, so don't uh, confuse them with each other. So this is an infusion resin and it has a lower viscosity because you need to have like a good infusion. So this is what you see here. It's all the resin being sucked through the fibers uh, from one end to the other end. So I did this for two parts. So these are the two halves on the left side of the screen. You can see the first mold, then the second one. And this is the third infusion. This is just a plate to create like a nice um, little edge in between two halves that will be glued together at the end so here I'm removing all the peel ply and vacuum supply on top so this is why it was needed and here we can see like the first part coming out of the mold so it's a nice gloss still some stripes um, through the through the gloss because of the release agents but that can be sanded off uh, that I will be doing in a later state so here are the three parts all three parts uh, came out of the mold pretty well and now I'm just using a Dremel tool um, to remove the edges so now I'm sanding wet sanding with a 1000 grit then polished and this is the little edge I'll be doing in between the two halves of the part so I'm cutting it two times and then I'm gluing them together with a permabond ET500 so this is an epoxy glue that uh, hardens in around five minutes so if you want to save some time it's quite good to have this one um, in the workshop now I'm just tracing the edge because I'll be cutting it out just to be able to put the laptop in if I, if I wouldn't be doing this it would just be a, a hollow box uh, glued together so I'm using the ET500 again just to make the edge stick on the bottom parts of the cover and I'm using some tape just to avoid all the uh, glue trips um, getting into the part itself. So I'm using a foam just to have like uh, to prevent scratches on the laptop. And then I'm just gluing the two halves together. Uh, then there's just time for the finishing touches. I'm just adding the stickers just to have like a, a better result. And so um, this was everything you needed to know about the cover I made for uh, the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon. So if you're interested in more videos you can check out my YouTube channel, click on the videos down below and you should be directed to the videos. Check out my social media, you have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Snapchat as well. This song was used uh, from SoundCloud, he's a young guy making some great music so check him out on SoundCloud. Link is down below.